Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this edition of Follow Suit, Fashion Unfiltered. Follow Suit is a mantra, which means to follow the suit. And as you follow it, you're going to come to realize the suit is a role model and a mentor whose purpose is to give guidance to the young men of this community and as well as to society. And it is my goal to honor and salute some of the individuals who not only put on the suit, but they wear it well. Hence the point, my guest today. Welcome back, everybody, and I'm glad you can make it to this episode of Follow Suit, Fashion Unfiltered. My distinguished guest today is Dr. Robert Pritchett. How you doing, sir? I'm good, thank you. All right, we watch that mic when we got it. We're yeah. okay. Right. How's everything going? Well, everything is well. well. I just want to say, I'm going to unbutton up here and get a little comfortable. All right. I just want to say um, thank you. It's my pleasure for having you on the show, taking some time out of your busy schedule and joining me. I appreciate it. Pr- appreciate the invite. Yeah. Yes, it's definitely my pleasure and an honor. Thank you. Thank so, you. So, Doctor Pritchett, you know the show's called Fashion Follow Suit Fashion Unfiltered. So, we're going to talk a little fashion as we start off. Does that uh, work? Yeah, that works. That works. Okay, I see you're looking. You know, you dressed the part. You came dressed the part. I love it. I love the color of the tie. I love the suit. Everything, the shoes, angle boots, whatever you want to call them, Cheshire quarter cuts, uh, very sharp. Thank you. So, thank who you. inspired you with your sense of fashion? Well, you know, my father. My father was my first inspiration. Uh, he always believed in, in uh, dressing the part. How you, he said, you know, when you dress, you, you act differently, you look differently, you carry yourself differently. So he was my first inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice. So I see, I, I love the color of your ties. This, what's one of your, that one of your favorite colors? Uh, it's one of those uh, that, you know, for the, the change of seasons, I, I like this uh, green. Green uh, for me is a is a is one of my favorite colors, and uh, yeah. So the green shirt, the the green tie, you know. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You put it together. Put it together well. Thank you. Thank you. So you got on pimp stripes. So are you in the patterns? Are you? Well, I I do like the pimp stripes, but uh, it's. Uh, this is pinstripes kind of when you're bigger. I think it kind of settles things down just a little bit, you know. Yeah, nice easy, easy pattern, not too deep, and it's a faded pinstripe versus one of the really loud uh, pinstripes. So you, you know, when you're a bigger guy, uh, not unless you like being loud, I prefer to be easy and, and slide it. Right. Yeah. So do you? Let's talk suits now. Are you do you like the single breasted, the double breasted, two button, three button? What's your favorite go to? Uh, when I'm when I'm moving around a lot, uh, I'll go with the uh, single single breasted. But uh, when I'm going to be stationary at a place, you know, uh, then I'll wear the double breasted. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I have some of both. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So now let's talk about shoes because I like the quarter cuts you got on right there. So. Are you into monk straps, tie-ups, slip-ons, loafers? Believe it or not, uh, I go with a little bit of all of the above. I like these particular. You're not going to believe uh, these are probably about 15 years old. It was but a I, It reminds me, I had something similar to them. I lost them. I'm, I've been trying to find something. I had them resold, reconditioned, redone, you know, but they, they're so comfortable, you know, because it's a square toe, it's more natural fit, so it doesn't squeeze your feet, right. so you're able to walk and, and feel really comfortable, and uh, and boots just uh, fit my feet better, because it gives me a little support around the ankles, I, I like that. Right. Yeah. It always starts when you're building that's right. The foundation. From the bottom up. From the bottom up. The foundation right. is everything. Y'all take pointers out there. Remember yes. that. Yeah. So, you know, when you're comfortable in your footwear, then you can kind of work up. You know, you don't want to be walking around all day and your feet are hurting. <laughs> right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Mess up your whole, your whole performance that you're going to put on. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> As you might say. Yes. All right. So let's uh, spin into Dr. Pritchett and talk about the man, Dr. Pritchett. Uh well, you, you know, it's a uh, it's a blessing. It's a, you know just to be here right now. You, you know, uh, the statistics for 
uh, I'm 59 now, and uh, the statistics for for black men and not being in jail, you know, and uh, and to have an education and to be healthy, uh, uh, comes from my foundation that my mother and father uh, gave me. You know, that's right. where it started from. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, like you said, this show is called Fashion Unfiltered, Follow Suit, and it's about inspiring young men to dress for success. But the purpose of the show is to shine the light and honor those who've been putting in the work in the community. So you're one of those people I know have been putting in the work and doing things with young men for a long time. So let's spin into that and what you do and how long you've been working with young men, guiding them, being a role model, a father figure, and a mentor. Well, you know, I think it started when I was probably like uh, 13 or so. I used to train in the martial arts. Uh, my dad used to take me to class. and. I would come from class and there were some kids in our neighborhood who couldn't afford it. And when uh, I would come home and I would teach them. And so I used to run classes in my basement. It used to be uh, fun. I was young and I was teaching and training myself. And uh, that was my beginning of me starting to mentor others. And of course I had younger brothers that I uh, mentored. But then it kind of gravitated uh, when I got into wrestling, I used to help out with the youth development and, and wrestling until I went off into the military. Right. And uh, while after coming out of the military, that's when it really blossomed into uh, one of my mentors and coaches, uh, Bob Watson, was running a youth development wrestling program for the inner city in uh, Wilmington, Delaware. And he asked me, hey, I need a coach. I need somebody that these young boys can look up to. And, I, and that's when it started. And I started running this program every summer. And, uh, and throughout the year, uh, I was doing, and during the year, I was doing martial art programs at the Y, the YMCA. And, uh, and then I was doing the wrestling during the summer. And we would take young men and uh, and have a camp all summer long and, and have them to, uh, we'd take them all over the country wrestling and just develop. Uh, it was one of the uh, first inner city uh, development uh, wrestling programs in uh, Wilmington, Delaware. You know? Right. Yeah. Good. And you expanded that up into Massachusetts now, right? Well, yes. Well, you know, I went from there. I uh, was in the fraternity, uh, Kappa Alpha Psi, and I started doing. Uh, uh, it was Norman's Future Stars. So we took young men who were playing basketball. I mentored them. We were in a mentoring program, uh, reading for uh, for boys, and we would mentor. We were in a reading program. So I did, and uh, big brothers and big sisters. So I had I was involved in all these things, always trying to give back something to my community. You know, I was fortunate to be in a certain position, and I didn't take that lightly. And it wasn't wasn't for me so that I could shine, but it was so that I could give back to my community. I could give back to some, uh, give some opportunities to other young men who, who needed me or who needed those opportunities. Right. Yeah. And uh, later, uh, after doing those programs for long periods of time, I started teaching the martial arts. And I wanted to figure out how can I help mentor young men who needed... Uh, the discipline, the focus, and the accountability. And that's the cornerstone of my uh, particular style of martial arts, uh, that uh, discipline, focus, and accountability. So when I moved up here to Massachusetts uh, nine years ago, I started that and I wanted to help some of the young men, uh, you know, in their 20s and 30s and even 40s to just gain some of that discipline, some of that focus, and some of that accountability. So I've used uh, the martial arts to help expand the, uh, the, those, uh, those proverbs, that discipline, that focus, and that accountability. Yeah. So what's the name of, uh, you have a dojo, right? Yes. Okay, let's stop being modest. That's yeah. what we're here for. Let's hear about it. What's the name of your dojo? All right. Well, yeah. it's Senda Jiu-Jitsu. Senda Jiu-Jitsu. Senda means free striking. And uh, Jiu-Jitsu means the gentle art, the gentle way. Uh, I've been training for 50 plus years in the martial arts. And uh, I've been fortunate, I lived in Korea, I've been back and forth to China. Uh, one of my 
influences was Professor V. Firenze Visitation, who was a uh, Filipino martial artist who uh, taught many uh, other martial arts long before me, uh, Moses Powell and uh, I call him Senior Sensei, uh, Kenny Brown, you know, so I, I just had so many, uh, Jamie Lane, Dr. Lane, uh, Bob Watson, uh, Bob, uh, Bob Godwin, I just had so many, Lonnie Fleming, uh, I've had so many martial artists to influence me, Professor Rod Smith, you know, right. these guys have influenced me, and now I've turned, uh, I've taken all of this training, and I even used it in my dissertation. Uh, how can I help at-risk kids to be more focused? So I put together a protocol, and this protocol they used in school, and it really helped them to center themselves a little bit more, to uh, give them some tools to help them to focus. So you still working in the school system now? Uh, yes, yes. I actually took on another position as a principal and di and uh, director of operations at a school just for that, that purpose, uh, special ed and uh, and behavioral uh, issues to help these some of these students with some of these uh, these things. Okay, yeah. so that's, that's great. Like I said, we're here to honor and salute you for all the work you're doing. And, you know, you have a... Yeah, a very, uh, I would say, well stacked together resume of the stuff that you've been doing with young men and working in the community and just your career as being an outstanding gentleman yourself. So with, let's see, you um, you was a world champion in the Olympic. You were uh, a world champion in, in your arts, I yes, would say. Yes, uh, well, I, I won the world championships in uh, Sun Show, which is uh, Chinese kickboxing. Uh, I'm a national champion in, uh, in wrestling, AU national champion, and I got second at the uh, regional Olympic trials twice in, in freestyle wrestling, and uh, I've meddled in the world games in, uh, in wrestling at the Maccabea Games uh, several times, and, uh, and I won the World Cup in uh, Sambo, which is a combination of judo and wrestling. So I've been doing some type of uh, martial arts, uh, like I said, since I think like uh, five or six, and and I've been competing all over the world in judo, sambo, uh, wrestling, uh, sun show. So I, I've been in taekwondo. Uh, so I've been just really fortunate to have trained in all of the different martial arts, and it's helped me to formalize this uh, this understanding about uh, the martial arts and the importance that it can play in your focus, in your discipline, in your accountability, you know? That's great. So one of the other reasons why I brought you on the show today is because I was honored to have you come and speak at the young men's dinner, shirt and tie dinner that I gave last year. Yes. The first annual one that I'm trying to bring it back again this year. And you was my keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we didn't have it being filmed at the time, but you gave a great inspirational speech to the young men who were in attendance. And I said, man, I have to recapture that. So I brought you on the show today because I want you to share that story of inspiration to the young men right now, if you don't mind. Sure, sure. You know, uh, when I was born, I was born in the 60s. Uh, and I had uh, almost terminal asthma. They told my mother that they didn't know if I was going to live past 12. Uh, quite, uh, I used to have asthma attacks on the weekends during the summer. Just Delaware is in, they call it Delaware Valley, just because the pollen, Delaware is in a valley uh, on the East Coast, and uh, the pollen counts were really high, and I was allergic to over a hundred different foods growing up. And uh, I used to wheeze all the time, and they didn't have as many uh, medicines as we see now on advertisement. Right. So I struggled. Uh, and when I was about, uh, I started out, I tried uh, karate. They wanted me to do, try a little exercise. Well, on the outside, I'm normal, but on the inside, I'm not. And psychologically, that had an effect on me, you know. And, and also, uh, asthma is an emotional trigger. Uh, so when you're emotional, when my parents separated, uh, that emotion of that used to trigger the asthma even more. You know, and I had to figure a way out of it. And my mother said to me one day, she said, listen, this is your disease. You ha you, you're going to have to own it and you're going to have to work on it. 
And then uh, my dad told me one day, he said, hey, Rob, he said, you'll be all right. He said, but it's what you believe, you know. And uh, I started training. I started getting really serious about training. I started watching these martial artists who were small and big overcome all of these odds. And I started believing that, hey, I can overcome any odd, any of the odds that are against me if I put enough into it. And I started training. And I started training knowing that I would have an asthma attack. I, I, wasn't, I w wouldn't be denied. I, I, uh, I started training. I would go running knowing that I might have an asthma attack afterwards. And I started, and then I, we got an inhaler and I got in hell. I started taking allergy shots. Then I started correcting my diet. You know, I started realizing that certain things were triggers. You know, I was allergic to all of these things. So I stopped using those things. I, I started using, uh, really going holistic and very health oriented in my diet. You know, I watched the milk and the sugar and, and those things. And I just started training and I kept it going. And by the time I was 16, I had gotten to a place where I didn't have asthma anymore. You know, uh, that along with prayer. You know, uh, yes, you know, and uh, this training started uh, to encapsulate my being and being in condition and being in shape was the way my my way out of it. And I knew it. Uh, and I took myself from uh, I needed to swim to build my lungs up. I used to swim, but I was allergic to the chlorine in the pool. So I had to overcome this. A lot of obstacles as a young man. Yes, uh, and, uh, but I wouldn't be denied, you know, uh, because it's all a mindset. You know, it is whatever you believe it is. And I started pushing myself. And uh, it, it took me to the point where when I went to go into the military, they couldn't find it. They had, I did chest x-rays. I did all kinds of things. My lung capacity was at a certain level. And uh, I was able to get into the military, you know. It was almost unbelievable. And from that point on, I knew where I could be. And I just had to push myself to be one of the most well-conditioned athletes in the world. I cross-trained in everything, you know, from running to swimming to jumping to climbing, you know, to lifting. Uh, I pushed myself to those levels so that I could be uh, who I wanted to be. And uh, that mindset helped me in education. You know, I felt like I was behind and I, but I knew that if I could fix my body, then I can fix my mind. Yeah. You know, I knew because my mind was part of what was helping my, my, my body, but my spirit was the strongest of them all because of my foundation that I had and my belief, a healthy belief in God and in myself and in my family that uh, it pushed me and I just became focused and driven and I and uh you know some people want to go get drunk I want to go train some people want to get high I want to push myself to this next level because the greatest gift you have other than life itself is your health and once I realized that I said uh I took it very seriously when you almost lose it you know what it's about you you, you know so it uh it inspired me to inspire others to share this, uh, share this mindset and to share this dream, to share this goal. And then I just became driven by it. And uh, it encapsulated who, everything that I've done, you know. And in the meantime, I take this in and I give it out, so you know. We, we appreciate you giving it out. Yeah. Giving it out well and for as long as you've been giving it out. You was also well decorated in the services, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I, you know, everywhere I go, I try and have a the, the same work ethic. You know, sometimes you might, I might start out on a on a on a lower end, but I'm not going to stay there. Right. You know, I'm I'm going to work until I get to to the top of it because that's where I'm supposed to be. Yes. But uh, it's it's called, it's a work ethic. But here it is. These are the cornerstones of even my martial art: discipline, focus, and accountability. I was my I was hard on myself. I pushed myself, and and then I became more focused. The more I pushed myself, the more focused I became. So I I, I, I already can tell that that um, spills off in, in, into the young men that you uh, 
encounter every day and the students that you encounter as well. Yes. You know, in coaching, uh, I've had a chance to influence a lot of young men. And uh, it, there's nothing better than knowing that you've helped somebody to be better, right. to do better. And uh, I believe that that's part of my calling. I don't believe, I know that that's part of my calling. You know, some people want to wanna sit up in the, on the mountaintop. Uh, I got to help some other people up here. Uh, you know, I got to reach down and pull some other people up. I, I've been really fortunate in that manner to have had so many positive black male role models in my life that uh, I owe it to every young man to, to do the same. All right. And uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate you. I hope the community appreciates you. I know your students appreciate you. You know, and so you're also a father. Yes. And a husband. Yes. You know, I met your son. You brought your son to the young men's dinner. Yes. A well-groomed young man. I can see he's on to great things as well. Yes. So father, husband, mentor, role model. Sensei, Green Beret, Green Beret, uh -huh. yes, uh, world champion. I mean, we can go on and on. And you know, it's like I said, it's just my pleasure to have you here, to bring you here, and salute you, and honor you, and ask you to keep doing the great work you're doing with our community and inspiring young men and trying to get them on the road to success. And I thank you for your time for coming on the show. It's my pleasure. Absolutely, I appreciate it. All right. Yes. Okay, everybody, that's a wrap. This is Follow Suit Fashion Unfiltered. We'll be back with more great episodes. Thank you for tuning in.